Section 3.4 deals with the real-life applications of systems of linear inequalities, graphing them, and using them to find solutions to problems. The method that is used is called linear programming. And if you haven't written these notes down already on your note sheet, you may want to make sure that you do that um, here as I go through it. But linear programming is the method of finding a minimum or a maximum value for a problem that satisfies any given set of conditions. Uh, the most important words, again, are minimum or maximum. So if the problem says find a minimum or find a maximum, you're dealing with a linear programming problem. The given set of conditions are called constraints. A constraint is any one of the conditions in a linear programming problem, and it's written in inequality form. Those are constraints. Now, once you write those inequalities and graph them, it's going to make what is called a feasible region. That's the area of the graph in which the solution lies. And finally, the, mo the, uh, the whole goal or the whole point of what we're doing for linear programming is what's called the objective function. That's the ultimate goal, people. That's the goal. It's the situation that you are trying to find the answer for. If you need to pause the video to write these down, please do. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead with our example problem and show you how linear programming works. You have an in-class practice sheet. There are two problems on it. This video will do one of them for you, the dentistry problem. Dr. Lee's dentist practice is open for seven hours each day. His receptionist schedules appointments allowing a half hour for cleaning and one hour to fill a cavity. He charges $40 for a cleaning and $95 for a filling. Dr. Lee cannot do more than four fillings per day. Find the number of each type of appointment that maximizes Dr. Lee's income for the day. Well, the first thing that you should always do is figure out what are your variables. What is it that you're trying to find? And it's usually at the end of the problem. It says find the number of each type of appointment. Each type. It means there must be more than one. Well, if I look up higher, it says cleanings and fillings. And i got to find each type. So I'm going to define my variables this way. And it doesn't matter. But I'm going to let x be the number of cleanings per day. And I'm going to let y be the number of fillings that Dr. Lee can do per day. Now we have our variables. The next most important thing that we need to figure out is the objective function. And as I mentioned on the previous slide, that's the whole goal of the problem. Well, that's also in the last part. It says we want to maximize, there's that key word, his income for the day. Income, money. Well, then I need to look in my problem up here, and i got to find money. Well, it says that he gets $40 per cleaning and $95 per filling. Well, that's how I write my objective function. I get $40 per cleaning, and I said X was cleanings, and I get $95 for each filling, and I said Y was fillings, and if I add those two together, that gives me my total dollars for the day. And I'm going to put a box around this. This is my objective function, and that's the whole goal of the problem. Now, in order to figure out the objective function and the goal, which this is the ultimate goal of the problem. The goal is to find out how many of each I can do and make a maximum amount of money. In order to do that, I need some constraints. Those are each of the inequalities. Well, first of all, and I'm going to write these in black. First of all, number of cleanings per day. That has to be a positive number. You can't have negative cleaning. So therefore, the number of cleanings has to be greater than or equal to zero. It could be zero. And same for the number of fillings. These two inequalities are on almost every situation. 
Why? Well, because we want positive answers. It makes no sense to have negative cleanings or negative fillings. So in this case, and in almost all cases, I'm going to put a box around them. Those two are two of your inequalities. Now, we have to figure out some other stuff. Well, what information have we not used? Well, first of all, he's open for seven hours per day. There, he can't work more than seven hours. And how do you get those total hours? Well, if you put the stuff that has hours in it, he gets a half hour for a cleaning and one hour to fill a cavity. So I need to put that information together. Well, it is a half hour per cleaning, so that's 0.5x. It is one hour for each filling, that's 1y. And if I add the two together, that can't be more than seven hours. It could be less. He could work less than seven hours. But there is our next constraint or inequality. Finally, there's one more piece of information we haven't used yet. It says, Dr. Lee cannot do more than four fillings a day. Number of fillings is y. Therefore, y has to be less than or equal to 4, because he can't do more than 4. And together, these four inequalities form our constraints, which is going to make our graph and our feasible region where the solution to our problem lies. OK, I'm going to jump forward. Here's our graph. First of all, let's graph the easy inequalities. The first one, the number of cleanings has to be greater or equal to 0. x is greater or equal to 0. We know that's a vertical line, and here it is right here, this line right there. Okay, And greater than or equal to means we're, we're going to end up shading over here. I'm going to erase that, but again, since we need shading, it's going to go there. The second line, y is greater than or equal to 0. Well, that's a horizontal line at 0. And since it's less than or equal to, that's this line right here. And since it's greater than or equal to, we're going to end up shading above it. And so our two shadings are going to intersect on quadrant number 1. Because all we want is positive answers. So all we need is quadrant 1 for this problem. I'm going to erase that. Next. It says the number of fillings has to be less than or equal to 4. Well, since it's y, we know that's a horizontal line at 4. And since it's less than or equal to, it will be a solid line at 4. So I'm going to draw this line all the way across my graph. And we need to shade since it's an inequality. Well, less than or equal to, I think, and I hope most of us know, that would be below this line. So I'm going to shade and start uh, creating our feasible region where the answer lies. So I'm going to shade all the way across this board because the answer lies anywhere underneath 4. That brings us to the last one, and I'm going to do this one in black. 0.5x, half hour for each fill or cleaning, plus one hour for each filling, cannot be more than a seven-hour workday. I need to graph that line. Well, in order to do that, in order to do that, I'm going to use the intercepts like we learned in Unit Two. I'm going to find the x-intercept. Well. To do that, I put 0 in for y. And if I put 0 in for y, I get 0.5x is less than or equal to 7. And pretty soon, you'll discover that the x-intercept is 14. And so I'm going to put a dot way out here at the x-intercept of 14. The y-intercept. The y-intercept, I put 0 in for x. Well, that's really easy because I get 1y is less than or equal to 7, so the y-intercept is 7. So I'm going to put a dot there. It's less than or equal to. That means I need to shade below the line, and, I, and it's also a solid line. So I'm going to do the best I can on this whiteboard. I'm going to try and draw a solid line just like that. It's going to look something, something like that. I'm going to go back and try this over again, see if I can get this to be straight. There, that's better. 
Okay. And it, since it's less than or equal to, I need to shade below the black line. But if you remember from section 3.3, 3, I can start shading right here, but that's not going to be right. The answer is going to be where the shadings intersect. And so underneath my black line, the area where all the shading is going to intersect will be right here. I have now graphed my four inequalities, and it has now formed what is called the feasible region, the area where the answer lies. And where is that? Well, all four inequalities have been graphed. I'm going to outline it for you in blue. It actually is the shape of a trapezoid. This area right here that is in blue is the area that's called the feasible region. And the answer lies here. Okay. Now, the last note that I'm going to write down, the last thing and piece of information we need to know. When finding a minimum or maximum value, the answer lies at one of the vertices of the feasible region. One of the vertices, that's one of the corners. And so I'm going to put the corners in red. The four corners of my trapezoid are right there. The answer to our problem, the final answer, is one of those four vertices. Well, I need their coordinates. This one is 0, 0. This one is 0, 4. This one is 6, 4, and this one down here is 14, 0. Those are the four corners that I need to test to find the answer. Now, I'm going to forward one page to our final slide, and I'm going to restate the objective again. The goal was to find Dr. Lee's maximum income and how many appointments he needs to schedule. The answer is one of the vertices. And I'll list the vertices again here for you that were the four corners of our feasible region. And if you remember, X was the cleanings and Y was the fillings. Now, very simply, in order to find the answer, all you need to do is take the coordinates and plug them in to the objective function to find the total income that he'd make per day. So for instance, one of the vertices was 0, 0. That means he did 0 cleanings and 0 fillings. Well, obviously, if you put 0 and 0 in there, his income for the day would be 0. Next, what if he did 0 cleanings and 4 fillings? Well, if you plug that in, and use a calculator to get the answer, you'll find out he'd make $380 for his income for that day. However, if he did six cleanings and four fillings, six cleanings, four fillings, if I plug that into my objective function, I find out that he would make $620 in income. And then the last one, 14 cleanings and no fillings. If you plug that in, you find out really quickly that, that comes out to be $560. We want the maximum income. Well, there it is, right there. The maximum income he can make in a day is $620 based on his constraints. And in order to do that, he should schedule six cleanings and four fillings. And he'll get that in in under seven hours, and he will have his maximum income. And that is how you solve a linear programming problem.